Please be seated. Whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. These are the words written by St. Paul to the Church of Thessalonica. They are words of encouragement to those who know the Lord as their personal Savior and who desire to live their lives for Christ. They are also words of warning concerning the return of Christ. At the time of St. Paul's writing, the body of Christ believed that Jesus' return was imminent. As history has proven, Jesus did not return, as was believed by the early church. Yet that does not make the belief in Jesus' return to have been proven as untrue. Instead, as time goes by, we who remain need to be even more alert to the return of Christ than those churches to whom St. Paul wrote. Yet, if Christ were re to return today, many Christians in the body of Christ, I fear, would not be ready. Far too many have fallen asleep at the wheel. We have allowed ourselves to be caught up in the affairs of this world. We are no longer living our lives in expectation of Christ's return. If we were, then the churches would be filled to capacity and overflowing. Christians would be warning their friends and family members to turn to Christ before the door of opportunity is closed forever. Perhaps because we have so many opportunities in this lifetime to make things right, the thought of a time when it will be too late to call upon the Lord seems impossible. After all, is not the Lord God full of mercy and loving kindness? Does he not want all peoples to be spared the coming judgment by fire? The answer to both of these questions, of course, is yes. The Lord does not desire for anyone to miss out on his salvation. This is why the Father God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that all may be saved. Yet the opportunity to receive this generous gift of divine forgiveness and love does have an expiration date. The early church knew this. As St. Paul, in writing to the saints in Thessalonica, states, Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains came upon, come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night, or of darkness. This belief of the early church in Christ's return cancels out any teachings that proclaim there are still certain prophecies that must be fulfilled for his return to happen. The early church believed they had been given a brief amount of time to win the world for Christ before the judgment of God fell. Over 10, over 2,000 years later, the church is still waiting. Yet the fervency of sharing the gospel of Christ has sadly been diluted. Instead, many Christians now accept the false belief that there are actually many ways to heaven, Christ being only one of them. In fact, just this past Friday, Muslims began holding their weekly worship prayer services in the National Cathedral as a show of unity among all believers. And this embracing of one another's belief was soon dispelled when an unsuspecting Christian happened to walk into the Muslim prayer service at the cathedral. 
surprised to find a Muslim prayer service in the National Cathedral, the Christian proclaimed, Jesus is Lord. Now the Muslim prayer service had not started. So she was not interrupting an event. Yet the Christian was immediately escorted out of the building. Just take a moment and think on this. It wasn't that the Muslims did not have another place to worship their God, Allah. No, that wasn't the case at all. They had been invited by the head authority at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. to hold a Muslim prayer service as a sign of interfaith unity. The Christian visitor who came to pray to the Father God in the name of Jesus was forced to actually leave a Christian place of worship. Yes, a Christian place of worship. I say this because this place of worship is known as and called the National Cathedral. A cathedral is a place of worship for Christians. Over time, the National Cathedral has become known as a house of prayer for all faiths. But that was not its original intent. And do we really believe that the Muslims would ever willingly allow a Christian prayer service to be held in one of their mosques, let alone a national mosque? Yet Christian authorities overwhelmingly go out of their way to bend over backwards, to be inclusive towards those who in reality <coughs> do not seek inclusiveness. In fact, as the Christian woman was being forced to leave the National Cathedral for having the audacity to proclaim inside a cathedral, Jesus is Lord, an Islamic clergy, and I hope I get his name right, Iman Hama Ahmad Chabili was praying the opening prayer before the House of Representatives also in Washington, D.C. How many knew that? <coughs> timing. Yes, timing. As the Iman openly gave praise to Allah, who is not the same God worshipped by Christians and Jews, a Christian was forced out of a Christian place of worship. The Iman's prayer was said to bow heads in the house of the people of this United States of America. There's even a picture of it if you don't believe me. And as far as we know, no one was forced to leave. Instead, all complied with the prayer to the God, Allah, who instructs his followers to kill the infidels, the unbelievers. As history has proven since the time of Muhammad, Islam is not pro-Christianity. Islam is anti-Christianity. Islam denies the divinity of Jesus of Nazareth. Islam even teaches that Jesus never died on the cross. Instead, Muslims proclaim daily in their prayers that Allah never had a son. And I agree with them on that. Because their God, Allah, is not our God. There was a time when Christians refused to bow to other gods. There was a time when Christ was upheld among Christians as the way, the truth, and the life. There was a time when Christians sought to bring the unsaved to Christ, not by bowing to their false gods, but by proclaiming as a brave woman in the cathedral did last Friday that 
Jesus is Lord. Sadly, those days of Christian fervor for the lost has now become a time in the past. I say these next words with great sadness. Our nation is no longer a Christian nation. As the leaders of this nation bowed their heads to the Muslim God Allah, they were rejecting Christ as Lord, whether they know it or not. Last Friday was a good day for the followers of Islam, but it was a sad day for Christianity and for this nation. One day the return of Christ will come, and it might even be today, and it will be a day of great calamity for the nations of this world. As the prophet Zephaniah wrote, I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind. And it sounds like those folks in the House of Representatives last Friday. Zephaniah goes on to write, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole world will be consumed for a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. This is the future that awaits all those who reject Christ. Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. This is what is coming to those who choose to worship false gods instead of the one true living God. It is time is a time of great destruction and horrible misery for those who reject God's gift of salvation through Jesus the Christ. These are the words that stirred up the early Christians to seek to save the unsaved by proclaiming the gospel that Jesus is Lord. For the sake of those who remain in spiritual darkness, now, now more than ever, we need to follow St. Paul's instructions to the saints in Thessalonica. Now, more than ever, we need to, as St. Paul wrote, be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. As the return of Christ draws near, now more than ever, we need to be bold we need to have that holy boldness like our sister in Christ who was physically removed from a church building for proclaiming the gospel. Now more than ever, we need to share the truth. We need to share the truth while we still can. That Jesus, Jesus is Lord. 